Okay, so you've received a bag of bits um, for a bias T. You've decided you want to have a, a go at receiving the uh, the geostationary uh, satellite um, S hail. Um, you're going to need one of these. Um, there is a single version available, a single output version available, and the difference is i think we're probably interested in at this stage if you just want to receive and a very basic way a single one is absolutely fine the single one is 85 milliamps and the twin is i think about 110 milliamps draw um, it is on the very edge of what this uh, regulator here can provide and this does get quite warm um, it would be helpful if you put the little clip on heat sink on there so if you can jump on ebay and find one then absolutely fine they just simply clip on and that will help that no end um, this is the 18 volt um, regulator and this is going to give us our upper voltage now the the reason why you want two voltages is one will control the vertical alignment of the the lmb and then when you switch it over to say 18 volts then it will go vertical or vice versa depending on how you've got this turned in the uh, dish um and while we're talking about this you you only need a small sort of tv dish or something like that just to really get going it's you don't need to have anything complicated at all this is all very very simple sort of stuff so we talked about the two regulators in there um that uh, that one there is a 78l18 and this one is, is um an l7812 so that gives you your 12 volts that gives you the base 18 volts um okay here you've got a small coil of wire now you want to uncoil this till you've got about i think 12 12 14 coils and you want to uncoil that and just keep it sort of straight and how i did that was i just used a simply just put a paintbrush or a pen up the middle of it like so um, and then just just sort of shape the coil unwound it and made the right sort of shape keep it sort of squeezed up now what you can do with this you can squeeze this up okay and just put some some glue across it like a bit of hot glue um, you can also put hot glue up the middle of it once you've got the sort of rough shape and then just peel the outer off and make it look nice um, I did do that actually and it made it it was quite nice it did look good now where that's going to go on the board and, and is in this this position here okay and that makes up your that gives you your inductor on on there like so okay but we'll as we go we'll put this together um and you'll see sort of where that goes you're going to need to scrape some of the um the enamel off of this and how i do that is uh, very simply with just like a, a um a scalpel or something like that and uh, just put it on a hard, hard surface and just just scrape you know just simply with the scalpel scrape at the the enamel just get it all cleaned off and then you can just tin the actual wires with the iron okay so we talked about that now you're also going to get um you're going to need a link of wire as well now here you can see that easier on there uh, here um i've actually put um i'll do that um i've actually done a little link of wire and what that is it's an off cut of the inductor um and you're going to need that you're going to need to scrape this down so you make up like a staple with a quite a clear sort of top and that's going to bypass our 18 volt um regulator slot we're not going to put an 18 volt regulator in there and the reason for that is because what i'm going to do here is i um, we're, we're going to put that that regulator in the input and what that will do that will give us our base 18 volts so actually this one here is surplus to requirements because we're already getting 18 volts um, my mistake um it's kind of like an afterthought really um when i did these boards you know i was you know it was just trying to fit it in between things and i just made a couple of real rookie mistakes 
and um, that one was uh, was a core car. Um, but um, what I've done now is I've actually completely just omitted that sort of circuit. You don't need to worry about it. And um, I've put this this 18 volt input in. And that what this means is you can use a very common 24 volt uh, DC power supply, um, which will then quite happily provide the 18.5 volts or 18 volts um, out from this to give you the vertical um, or the horizontal control of the of the LMB. So we've shown where that's going to go and we've spoken about just nipping off a little bit of, uh, of wire to make that link up. So keep them all to one side. Now then also you're going to get in here, there's a couple of, these are the most expensive parts of the kit. Um, these are almost, uh, well, I mean, it's actually eye-watering how much these were. Um, you know, they, they range, I think one was about £2.97 and the other one I think was getting on for £4.50, <laughs> um, depending on where you go uh, to get them. Um, but uh, needs must and all that, and I needed to get the sort of things. Um, right, you'll notice on this side, okay, there's um, a mark in there for SDR. Now, this is very important to remember. Okay, the SDR side doesn't carry any DC. Um, and it's the DC is blocked by this 470 uh, picofarad uh, capacitor here. Um, and the DC here is fed via um, this inductor. Okay, and that goes out towards the LMB. But here you can see there's a track that goes along here, but the DC is blocked by this uh, capacitor. So you're not getting any DC on here. Now we need to double check that before you connect anything valuable to this, you need to make sure that this is this is blocked. So what we'll do is we'll, once we put this together, we'll, we'll run through a couple of checks and you can sort of see that it's, it's safe to connect. Right, so the, the way I thought this out is I'm going to use this uh, male connector um, and the male is the one with a pin in the center um, and you can then connect this in. Now I would probably do this, um, I'd probably do this first actually because this will take the most heat, um, it will, you know, it, it uh, yeah, it will take the most sort of heat. And also when it's done, it will actually help you uh, set it up. Or you can do them last. It doesn't really make any difference. Um, but I would probably do them do them first. Um, in fact, we'll, we'll, we will do that first. And then once you've done that, you need to make sure that the male one goes to the SDR. You can see that. Okay. And then the female one there goes to the... RF and DC and what we we'll do is I say we'll, we will check um, make sure that uh, that is done correctly before you make any connections you need to really really be 100% sure now here you're, you've got some um, uh, capacitors now what you need to do is identify these there's some very very small writing actually on these and it's actually a three digit code um, in this case, it's 474. Um, that one looks like 471 from here. Can't actually see. Yeah, that's 471. So this one here, 474 is um, 47 and then four zeros. Okay, and then that one is 47 and one zero. So that one there is your 470. Okay, that one there is likely to be 0.47. So you, what I've done is I've I created a little uh, paper list as well, um, which you can download off of James um, James's blog. Um, and uh, also there'll be the dates and stuff of the builder Builderthon or the, uh, the when we're going to assemble this live. Um, that one's 104. I think there are two 104s um yeah so there's two of the same there so that one is the point one so they go in just here the, the point zero one microfarads and point zero one microfarad and that one there is the ta 10 nanofarad so you've got basically uh four seven 
one which is very easy to, to work out that one he goes in there but again what we do is we, we'll work we'll go through this um with the paperwork so you need to find your um your codes what i would do is if you take a piece of paper put them on put the code and then the value okay and then just lay the the capacitors out so they're ready to go all right and you know double check everything as you assemble it um and then um what we'll do is we'll work on i think probably what we do is we'll work on that top part you know top part first um with the uh you know the the capacitor in there then we'll maybe do that part second and then we'll just pop those in usually what you would do is do the lowest um, components first but this one's a little bit of a mishmash um we'll we'll do the um the ones that are hardest to put in first um and then we'll move on to the easier components and to be honest with you you know these are pretty much next to nothing you can just put them in just put a little tiny bit of a tweak on the on the legs to stop them falling out i would populate the entire board flip it over on a little bit of um, blue tack or something like that and then we can then bish bash bosh get the the uh, the board soldered up um i would triple check everything before you put any solder to the back of the board because this is a double-sided board okay the any um if you want to get a component out it will be a, a real job okay so really really double check everything before it goes in and as i said before this um regulator here the 7812 is the only one we, we populate needs to go in backwards okay and that is my fault i made an error um i screen printed the board wrong um well technically i didn't screen print the board wrong what it was it was uh, i used the wrong component template and um luckily it was just reversed okay it could have been much worse than that which could have meant some real sort of jiggery pokery with the legs and you want to get that down as low as you can okay because the ground on this will act as part of the heat sink as well but you'll notice here if you can see that if i can zoom in just a tad for you if i can do that if it'll go let me see that you'll see that it's actually completely reversed okay so i've actually put the the d is facing the complete opposite direction to the screen print now um like i said it was my fault um you know it was uh sorry i've just uh, ruined everything um it's completely my fault wrong component choice in the uh in the design stage right so that pretty much is a sum up um and in the next i'll, I'll split this bit off now um and in a part two video I'll put uh, I'll start assembling the board and we can we can start assembling that together. Now, as I said before, um, this is going to be part of a build-a-thon with uh, James M Zero JFP, and I think it's going to go out with uh, with a club uh, MX Zero MXO. Um, so what they'll do is they'll probably play the next video or they'll play this video first you can have a little look and uh, have a look at the components um and they'll stop it periodically um so that everyone can sort of catch up and uh, maybe discuss you know bits and bobs of it um and then what i'll do is i'll do a part two video of the assembly of the um of the board and um and then we'll maybe we'll we'll do towards the end of that maybe we'll we'll do a part three video of the testing how we're just going to just check that everything's okay and then i'll explain you know what each of the parts um does as as well as we're putting it together right okay well thanks for watching so far and uh, see you in the next video